we thank you for those that will also listen and hear a mighty, impactful word that will change their lives via, whether it's later on on Facebook, whether it's on YouTube, Father, whatever the impact, however social media source that they use, that this word will be an impact on their lives. We thank you for that. We thank you for the Grace community. Uh, we thank you for our connection to the community in which we're, we're striving to be as we continue to grow in this, in this community. We ask also that you grow us on the inside. Grow us up on the inside, Father, so that we make great decisions. Not good decisions, but great decisions as we represent you. We thank you for that. We thank you again for this service. We thank you for those that will give. We ask now that you will bless their givings. Lord, we ask that you bless it 30, 60, 100 folks that, that blow their minds as they see that I gave. And why are all these blessings coming back? It's because you was obedient. You made the right choice and you gave and didn't worry about what your friends said. We thank you for those that were given. We ask now that you bless everybody that was listening or that will listen later. Thank you for all that you would do in our lives. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Greetings and salutations once again. This week is week two of Advent. Advent is the beginning of the church's liturgical year. It includes the four Sundays leading up to our celebration of Christmas. The Advent season is a time of preparation of our hearts, minds, and spirits for the anniversary of the Lord's birth and when he comes again. At Grace Christian Church and other Christian communities, Advent is celebrated by the putting up of an Advent wreath and lighting candles each week. The use of the wreath and candles during Advent is a long-standing Christian tradition. The wreath and the candles are full of symbolism tied to the Christmas season. The wreath itself which is made of various evergreens, signifies continuous life. The circle of the wreath, which has no beginning or end, symbolizes the eternity of God and the everlasting love we find in his son, Jesus. The candles also have their own special significance. The first candle, which I have already lighted, symbolizes hope. The second, purple candle, which would be lit today, represents peace. On the second week of Advent, we thank God for the peace that the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, brings. The second candle is also known as the Bethlehem candle. It serves as a reminder of Mary and Joseph's faithful journey to Bethlehem, where God's gift of love was born into the world. Let us pray. Dear Father God, 
We yes. thank you, we celebrate you, and we honor you on this morning. Oh God, on this second week of Advent, we celebrate the pending birth of the Messiah. Peace has come into the world. The angel of the Lord declared and brought good tidings of great joy that will be for all people. For today in the city of David, a savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. We rejoice with the heavenly host, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace. They spoke peace, God, and good will towards all men. We shall hallelujah, for unto us a child is born. We shall hallelujah, for unto us a son has been given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, our Lord and Savior, the Messiah, Jesus the Christ. For that we give you thanks, Father God. And as we prepare to celebrate his birth, Father God, we would be remiss if we neglect the preparation for his second coming, Father God. We want to be ready. We want to be in the number, Father God. And for that, we just give you thanks. For that, we give you praise. It is in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen. 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 Glory amen. to God. Amen. I thank God for his son. I thank God for his love. Yeah. I thank God for his grace. Yeah. I thank God for his mercy on this yeah. morning. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I need some grace. I don't know about you. I need yeah. some mercy. I don't know about you, yeah. but oh, even when I feel unlovable, I know the love of God is still there. Yeah. Hallelujah. I yeah. thank him. Thank I thank him thank for loving me. I thank him. Yeah. Hallelujah for loving me through my mess. I thank him for thank loving me through my situation. Yeah. I thank for his love. Hallelujah. It takes a lot, hallelujah, to be a loving God to unloving people. It takes a lot, hallelujah, to be a faithful God to a faithless people. It takes a lot. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And our, our faithfulness wanes. And yes. it's a big cycle that goes up and down and yes. around and around. But I thank God that he is the same yesterday, thank today, you. and forevermore. I give some praise for that. Thank I thank you. Having said all of that, we are going to spend some time this morning with the thought committed. Committed. And if I had to pick a title based on that thought committed, that thought would be the committed God. The committed God. Commitment is making decisions in advance, regardless of the circumstances. Loyal dedication to see it through to completion. Again, commitment is making decisions in advance, regardless of the circumstances, with loyal dedication to see it through to completion. The completion part of commitment, achieving the overall goal, right? The completion part of commitment is achieving the overall goal. To get to the completion part, one has to engage in the following. Planning, which is strategizing, management of time and resources, and discipline the temperance and long suffering to see it through. A, a natural example of that would be someone who wants to lose weight. That person makes a decision in advance that I want to lose X number of pounds to reach my goal weight. No matter what, the decision has been made to lose X number of pounds, regardless of the circumstances. What makes this person committed is the loyal dedication to see it through to completion, which is reaching the goal weight. Now comes the planning, the strategizing. That's developing a workout schedule, yes. gym membership, yes. dieting. Yes. Then comes the management of time and resources, adhering or following the workout schedule and diet. Budgeting money, amen, to pay for the membership, 
and the special food that you eat because eating healthy costs more than right. eating poorly. Amen. Right. Gluten-free costs money. Fresh produce costs a lot of money. Yeah. Amen. So it takes some management of your resources. Discipline, temperance, self-control, and long-suffering, which is patience. Discipline to see, amen, press toward to persevere, to push through to the other side of the goal. That is working out when you don't feel like it. That's right. Pressing past, amen, the fast food restaurant when all you want to do is stop. Even when you can't see the visible results by the way your clothes fit or what the scale says, amen, you keep on anyway, you keep on anyhow. Yes, when thinking about the committed God, amen, his goal, amen, is that the whole world would be saved through Jesus Christ. And I'll read it into your hearing. John chapter 3, verse 16. Most of us are familiar with this verse of scripture. For God so loved the world yes, he that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So the committed God, his goal, which he decided in advance, was that the whole world would be saved through Jesus Christ. Why? Because he loves us. Amen. And, and I know he loves us, because I'm going to skip over to Romans, and that's your second scripture that we'll focus on today. Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors yes. through him who loved us. Yes. For I am convinced yes. that neither death nor life, yes. neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to yes. separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus yes. our Lord. The committed God in his goal. Since the fall of man, God has been planning, amen, the salvation of his creation. Genesis 3 and 15, after the fall and Jesus of God confronted Adam and Eve and the serpent, he said it this way, Genesis 3 and 15, I will put an enmity between you and the woman, between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. I will put enmity between you and the woman. I will block you. I won't let you do this thing. I'm going to stop you. And, and, and see what happens is, amen, amen, God in his infinite wisdom, his planning, if you will, because that's that's part of it, the strategy part of it, amen. We learned in Sunday school that it was 14 generations, amen, between Abraham and David, and 14 more generations between David and the period of exile, and 14 more generations between the period of exile and the birth of Jesus the Christ. God was planning, the committed God was planning this the whole time, amen. I will put an enmity between you and the woman. God says, I'm planning. I've made my mind up. Amen. I've chosen to move on to that which I have planned. My only begotten son, John 3 and 16, I love the world so much. I love you so much that I will give my son as the once and for all guilt sacrifice for sin. Management of time and resources, the committed God. God is the creator of time. God exists outside of time. He created it, amen? So he exists outside of it. In other words, God is not governed by time the way you and I are governed by time. God is the one who governs or manages.
manages the time. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. God uses time to lead his people. He led the people out of bondage in Egypt into the promised land. God uses time to purify his people. He calls his people to wander in the wilderness for 40 years to all of the people that doubted him, that questioned whether or not they could overtake the inhabitants of the promised land, that spoke against entering the promised land that was flowing with milk and honey. He had them wander until all of them died out. Amen. God told Moses that they would never enter into the promised land. God uses time to purify his people. Amen. God uses time to rebuke and correct his people. Like when the children of Israel were disobedient and worshipped idols. Despite numerous warnings, God sent prophet after prophet after prophet. God sent them into exile for 70 years. God uses time to save his people. God is not slow, amen, in keeping his promises as some people understand slowness. God is long-suffering, not wanting any of us to perish. God uses time, amen, discipline, temperance, and long-suffering. Our country, amen, <laughs> this, this great democratic system that we have, the government, the United States, of America establish certain checks and balances to prevent a true imbalance in all the power that a governmental system has, right? They um, establish three branches, amen, and one would check the other. The three branches are the executive branch, the judicial branch, and the leg legislative branch of government, right? And they kind of work in perfect concert with one another to prevent one branch of government from being too strong and too drunk with power. Amen, because there is a saying that absolute power corrupts absolutely. And, and what happens is when someone gets a taste of power, 45, it is very seducing. Amen. And once you get it, 45, you don't want to let it go. You'll fabricate stories. You will ask for donations to your re-election defense fund. You'll do anything you think you want to do, 45, without the support of those around you. In sharp contrast to that, in sharp contrast to that, God, you're powerful. Amen. Amen. God, the all-powerful, amen, who has absolute power, does none of those things, okay? So, so the power that man thinks he has is not power at all. And then God is power. He is omnipresent. He is omniscient and he is omnipotent. Omnipresent means all present. Here with us right now. With the ministry of the street and three blocks over and two right, cities right. over in another on. country, Come God on. is omnipresent. Yeah. He is with my mother worshiping in yeah. New Jersey. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And he is yeah. with a mother down the street yeah. from us right here yeah. who is also worshiping with us. Yeah. And then he is also right now at the yeah. same time yeah. with the family who is driving on the highway. Yeah. Amen. To visit a relative. Yeah. And he is yeah. still in the heavenly realm. Yeah. God is omnipresent. Yeah. In addition yeah. to being omnipresent, yeah. he is omniscient. Okay, all knowing, amen, the past and the present. Hallelujah, God knows it, the future, and everything in between. God knows it all. His knowing is total. His knowing is complete. Because God is all knowing. Hallelujah. Nothing catches him by surprise. Nothing shakes him. Nothing moves him. Hallelujah. And this is, this is going to be a shocker, amen. Because God already knows the end back to the beginning and everything in between. Nothing we do disappoints him. Disappointment comes when we don't know somebody is not going to hold up their end of the bargain. Hallelujah. God already knows it all. And if he's our mission, there's no way we could ever disappoint him. He doesn't worry. Mm. Nothing confuses him. Oh. Everything there is to know, God knows that he's omniscient. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Thank you, Jesus. 
Last but certainly not least, God is omnipotent. Yeah. Amen. That means all powerful. Oh, God has yeah. total control. What does He control? The wind, He controls the rain, the ocean, physics, chemistry, you name it, He got it. Biology, all of that. Yeah. God can do whatever He wants to do yeah. when He wants to do it. However, He wants to do it. He is omnipotent, all powerful. Yeah. And with Him, we don't have to worry about absolute power corrupting absolutely because yes. God has the discipline yes. to forever be our holy God. God has the temperance, yes. amen, to be the righteous God, the mighty God. Yes. He is long-suffering or yes. patient with us. God destroyed entire family lines, hallelujah, for their yes. disobedience and their deception. God, God let a generation die off before stepping one foot into the promised land. God took his spirit from those he called and positioned and anointed to leave. And today, God is long-suffering with us, not wanting anyone to perish. That is temperance. Yeah. Hallelujah. Demonstrating discipline and temperance toward us. That's power. Mm -hmm. So when God says, God says I yeah. love you, he yeah. means it. Yeah. Yeah. When God says, I love you and you fall short, he means it. Yeah. When God says, I love you and you keep lying, God means it. When you, God says, I love you yeah. and you keep doing wrong, God still means it. Yeah. When God says, I love you and you know you're unlovable, yeah. God yeah. means it. Yeah, yeah. When God says, I love you and you're hurting, God means it. Yeah. When God says, I love you and you feel lonely, God loves you and he means it. Thanks, when God says, I love you and you fail everything, one and everything God means it. When God says I love you, then you lay it up with every Tom, Dick, and Harry, and Tiffany. God means it. When God says I love you, and you have turned your back to go your own way, God means it. When God says I love you, and you don't even know His name, God says I love you with an everlasting love. God says I love you, even when you won't pray to me. I love you. God says I love you when you won't even give a dollar. God says I love you anyhow. Yes. Let us pray. Yes. Amen. Oh, 
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Dear Father God, the committed God. Yes. Oh, God, how you love us so much so yes. that you would give your only begotten son, Father God, to yes. give us an opportunity, Father God, to get back in relationship with you. Yes. Oh, God, to get back to the way things used to be in the yes. Garden of Eden. Father God, for that we just say thank you for being a committed God. Yes. Oh, God, when we lack commitment ourselves, Father God, you are still committed to us, oh God. And yes. for that we say thank you. Thank oh, God, you love us. Despite us, you love us in spite of us. Oh, yes. Father God, you love us. Oh, yeah. Oh, God, and I just thank you for that. Oh, God, I thank you. Even if I go back over my short life, Father God, and I see the times, oh, God, when I left you, when I see the times, oh, God, that I walked away from what I knew was right, yes. oh, God, when I see the times, oh, God, that I knew your name, but I wouldn't pop my lips and say, Jesus, yes. oh, God, when I look back over my life yes. and I see that you were still there loving me, protecting me with your grace and your yes. mercy, Father God, yes. oh, God, my soul cries yes. out, my And I thank you. Thank I love you. you. Only thank the committed God, God could do such a thing. Yes. And I thank you for being yes. the committed God. Yes. Father God, I, 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 I thank you for those who are in attendance. I thank you for those yes. who are watching. Yes. Oh God, I thank you even for the ones who may not know your name, yes. but want to know about the committed God. Yes. Oh, they feel so unworthy. They feel so unloved, Father God. Yes. They feel so lonely. But you, God, you said I love you. Yes. I love you so much and I will give you my very best. Yes. Oh God, I love you so much and nothing can yes. separate you from the love that I have Thank for you, you in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I pray for that person, Father God, yes. that they would recite this prayer to be saved, to be mm. in the knowledge of the committed God. Because yes. you're there whether they know you or not, but they'll be in the knowledge now of the committed God. Yes. They need only say, Father God, I'm a sinner. Father God, I'm a sinner. In need of a Savior. In need of a Savior. That Savior is your son. That Savior is your son. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. He died for my sins. He died for my sins. And on the third day, and on the third day you raised him from the dead. You raised him from the dead. Your word, your word says, I need only. I need only. Confess with my mouth with my what I believe in my heart. What I believe in my heart. And I believe. 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 And I am saved. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Yes. Hallelujah. Ain't God a good God? Yes. He's a committed God. Yes. He's so earlier when we were having technical difficulties, amen, that if you wish to connect with us, you may do so, uh, uh, send a direct message to the ministry, or you may send us an email at grace, the number three pillars, at gmail.com, grace, three pillars, at gmail.com. Thank you so much.